All right, so we appreciate you dealing with the technical difficulties. Now we have the audio working and everybody tuning in can hear me. If you're just joining us, one to nothing Franklin Pierce on an early penalty kick from Jeronimo Ferrando Ferry. Nice tackle by Thomas Espero. An unlucky break for the Eagles in the early going. A handball in the box. And like I said earlier, before the audio was working, the University Eagles are no stranger to being down early, especially due to a penalty kick. They faced a deficit in each of their first three games, yet have found a way to come back and win or draw all the competitions. An early penalty in game one against AIC. They conceded a goal in the 12th minute of that game and were still able to draw 1-1. They were down 1-0 early to Adelphi in game two of the season, ended up beating them 3-1. Then, of course, their most recent game against ranked number 14, Southern New Hampshire. They were down 2-0 and clawed their way back to earn a tie. Now post on the move, wild cross. Somehow still kept in near that right corner flag. Another cross deflected. Nice job by Eitor Retuerto. And now Franklin Pierce on the move. Franklin Pierce, 18 straight wins dating back to 2021. They're 51 1 and 2 in their last 54 games. The defending national champions off to a great start this year, outscoring their opponents 9 to 1 in two games, and are winning the total shots 37 to 8. Easy save for Jensen on the other end. And the reason why they have so much success, which Travis Brent preaches every single day, is controlling the midfield, being disciplined, winning the 50-50 balls, and attacking every single pass made by the opponent. The cross into the box is kicked up in the air. Fight for the header, and it comes down to a post midfielder. Now Post is on the move. Cut to the middle is defended nicely by Ferry. So Gent Salimi on the counter attack. And Ferry commits the foul right there. So it'll be a free kick for Post. Head coach Travis Brent in his first season at the helm. He played with Marshall University as a soccer defender and then had a nice professional career starting with the Portland Timbers U23 squad back in 2013 and it ended with the Harrison City Islanders in 2017. The cross into the box is caught over there by Casillas. Bending towards that back post but you definitely think it could have been a little farther out in the box. Come on, come on. 
And then the leader of the post-university Eagles, Ted Haley, in his 19th season as head coach. He's 184, 118, and 37 in his coaching career. And Haley played his collegiate career with UConn and then three more years at the College of Charleston. Again, a top 25 matchup. Post number 21 in the country. They're 1-0-2 on the year. Post wanting a foul there, but the refs say play on. Rodrigo Parafita, a long ball towards the middle of the box, but defended nicely. So Florindo looking to make another good defensive play. A sea of post-university defenders causes Franklin Pierce to circle the ball back. Working it back to Parafita on the left side. Cross towards the back post, bending. It's kept in. And the cross is blocked by Florindo. Hounding the midfielder there on the right side. Now Franklin Pierce dancing with it. Another low cross is cleared. Caleb Williams turns the ball over in the middle part of the field. And now Post looking to counterattack. Beautiful ball to the left side. Felix Nassen switching the field, a beautiful ball. And this is what Ted Haley was preaching. It's got to be patience. We know this is the best team in the country, but we can't let our emotions get the best of us. We have to take what the defense is giving us. And despite that unlucky first goal, they are doing a good job of staying disciplined on the defensive end and not forcing anything when they get into the attacking third. Pablo Tenorio working it back. Florindo on the left side, surveying his options. He'll go backwards as well. Beautiful ball, but there's an offside call. So it'll be a free kick right near the 18-yard box. It was a good idea, but again, a great job by the back line of pushing up just a bit to make sure the Eagles were offside. Almost 15 minutes into the first half, 1-0 Franklin Pierce on a penalty kick goal from Geronimo Ferrando Ferry. It was three minutes into competition. And as you hear, a careless decision there on the free kick from Casillas. Post trying to make him pay. Nice pass towards the middle of the field. Franklin Pierce pleading for them to have the ball back, but the refs say it's Post who will have the ball. Beautiful ball on the right wing. The cross attempt is blocked. And there will be a corner near that right corner flag.
Franklin Pierce, corner kick, taking my number eight. Ferrando Ferry looking to give his team a 2-0 lead. Cross to the middle of the box. The header is blocked and a nice clearance. Now Post on the move. Tenorio dragged from behind. There's a foul. We'll see if there's a booking. That is the first booking of today's action. And in hindsight, that is a pretty smart decision to not let Post succeed on the counterattack. That is what they are very good at. They have speed with the front three players in their lineup. So a free kick for the Eagles near the halfway circle. And that's what the Ravens' pressure will do to you and now they're on the counterattack. Long shot into the box is deflected, headed up into the air, and Jensen claims it. Punts it right away. And there's a foul on the Eagles. The Ravens quickly getting it to Parafita. Caleb Williams dishing it back to him. Parafita cannot save it right near us. You see Caleb Williams so active on the defensive end, yet he's an attacking midfielder for the squad. Has had a point in each of the first two games this season, an assist in game one against Queens. And then two goals in the most recent game against Bridgeport. Both of those go goals coming in the second half. Williams, one of the 11 returners on this Ravens squad. And it's the experience that Travis Brent loves. A lot of champions from last season returning to this team. The cross towards the middle is nicely defended. Over there by Parafita. Ferrando Ferry avoids the tackle and they're pushing the ball up the field. The Ravens have space. Pass to the middle. Ball dragged back towards the middle. Now they'll get it back to the right wing. Nice touch in the cross towards the key. Nice save by Jensen. And that's going to be a penalty, or I should say a foul. It goes against the Ravens. Now Jensen is banged up. So an injury timeout, Jensen still in pain. It looked like he got the wind taken out of him. So hopefully he's going to be okay. And now the trainer out to look after him. Again, for those of you just tuning in, we're about 18 minutes into action. The number one team in the country, Franklin Pierce, leading the number 21 team in the country, post one to nothing. It was off a penalty kick score from Jeronimo Ferrendo Ferry. That came in the third minute of action. It was off an unlucky handball in the box. Again, post has trilled or has conceded the first goal of the game in each of their first three matchups, and they've still found a way to get at least a point in all those contests. The Ravens have only one shot on goal, and they have the one goal. 
Post has had some good chances, but only one shot has been on target. Jensen patting his chest saying I'm good. Just making sure he's catching his breath. <laughs> the Eagles are warming up a goalie as well just as a safety precaution. But it looks like Jensen wants to stay in the game. He's been a gritty goalkeeper for this squad, taking a lot of hits in the early part of the season. And he's still competing, still giving his team a chance to win. And it's going to be focus that helps Post come back in this game and earn a couple points. So we're back in action, a little over 18 minutes in. Post trying to switch the field. A high arcing kick near the halfway circle. Franklin Pierce collects it and dumps it back to the goalie. The Ravens looking to make a change at the next dead ball. A beautiful ball over there. It was to Eitor Retuerto. The pass to the middle of the field is tackled. And there is a foul right outside the 18-yard box. It was Aaron Sanchez that took the hit being helped up by the referee. And this is what we expected in the early going. Two of the top teams in the country duking it out. It's going to be physical. It's going to be intense. And whoever is the most disciplined and focused squad is going to come out on top. So another free kick. It'll likely be Ferry taking it once again. Parafito wants it, so he's gearing up. It might be an indirect kick. It looks like that's the case. That shot is blocked to Caleb Williams. That shot is deflected. So a good defensive stand for the Eagles. The ref signaled an indirect kick at first. But then at the last second, he changed his mind. It was a direct kick for Parafita, and that's why he had the low shot on goal. Marcus Botange checking in for the Eagles. And there's a turnover in the middle of the field. Eunice Adar Kanusi lays it back. <laughs> so after the block from Francisco Souza, Franklin Pierce making a change. Now into the game for Franklin Pierce, number 19, Gao Valenti. Valenti coming in for Caleb Williams. He's getting his first rest of the day of the day. A bad throw in turns the ball back over to the Eagles. Look at this pressure from the Ravens. Still a good pass. And there's finally a penalty called. 
Gent Salimi was cleated in the back of the heel. I mean, my goodness, these Ravens are a bunch of road runners. They're attacking third. Just Energizer Bunnies not running out of that energy trying to steal the ball. Travis Brent always preaches fitness. If you work a little harder in practice than the other teams, make sure you're fit. When the going gets tough, that's what separates you from even the number two team in the country. And that's why this team has had such a long winning streak. A booming ball was blocked by Pierce. Free kick for post. Most of the play taking place in the middle third so far. Both teams with only one shot. Franklin Pierce, however, with the one nothing lead. Working it back to Casillas. Now Post with the pressure near the 18-yard box. And it's turned over. And Agustiatis will circle back. Beautiful ball from Florindo. Post on the move. The cross into the box is headed up in the air. Casillas leaps up and claims it. So far the Eagles exploiting the weakness on the left side. And that might be something that they need to continue to do. They're doing a good job of switching the ball to that left side of the field and getting crosses in. Parafita, a long ball down the sideline. It's claimed over there by Retuerto. He tries to cross it in, but a nice block. Marcus Botange working really hard over on that right side. Another substitution for the Ravens. It's gonna be number 21, Javier Torres Sanchez. He's coming in for Ferrando Ferry, who scored the first goal of this game. Ferrando Ferry, the graduate transfer from Valencia, Spain. And he was a very big acquisition for this Franklin Pierce squad, just adding more experience to an already deep team. And you see why they want him taking those penalty kicks in big moments. Ball through the middle is blocked. Almost a tug on the jersey. And somehow Bertie able to escape it. Now Salimi trying to switch fields, but the pass is blocked in the middle of the field. And another foul. This one committed on Souza. And a football hit near the touchline. Alvaro Ramira putting his hands up in the air. That was a clear foul. Almost lowered his shoulder and went into the gut of the post-university player. You've got to think that's a yellow card. It seemed to 
Yeah, there definitely was some malicious intent there, I felt like. That was not a great hit. The ref talking with Post. They really wanted a card, and I don't blame them. In that situation, if you're a defender, you've got to sort of chop at the end of it. And what I mean by that is you can't be going full speed trying to tackle somebody. you got to sort of stop right before you get to the defender so you close in on them and make them make a decision. Almost a beautiful give and go, but it just rolls out of bounds. You see the chemistry in the early going with Salimi and Botange. The midfielder is working really hard. And that's going to be a difference maker in this game. A push from behind, that one on Salimi. And even if it doesn't look like you're doing it egregiously, the refs are going to call that every single time. You got to do your best to keep your hands off your opponent's back. It always stinks because you're not gaining position from it, but it's just one of those calls that you got to try and avoid. Nice cutback from Parafita into the middle of the field. Just getting off the pass. Now Post. What a defensive play. Going in there with the hard tackle. Forcing the Ravens to circle back to... Diego Montoya Casillas. Always such a fun name to say. I'm a big Princess Bride fan if you've ever seen that movie. It's really cool. And I love saying Inigo Montoya. It just rolls off the tongue really nicely. And that's pretty much with all these names on the Ravens squad. Rodrigo, Rodrigo Perafita. I mean, the list goes on. If I don't stop now, I don't know if I'll ever stop to. And a lot of people say I've been blessed with the ability to roll my R's too. Maybe it's because I have a first name that starts with an R. I don't know why, but I'm glad God gave me that ability. Shot at the top of the key is blocked. Post trying to clear. Ball headed up in the air. The whistle's finally blown. It's going to be a foul on the Eagles. Free kick near the 25-yard line. Parafita into the box. The header is saved by Jensen. Sticking his left paw out and touching it out of bounds. What a play from Jensen. Taking away the second goal of the game for the Ravens. Full extension laying out and making an incredible save. It'll be a corner kick for Franklin Pierce. Franklin Pierce corner. Parafita again. The shot is off the crossbar and out of play. What a strike from Aaron Sanchez, but off the side of the post. And the Eagles can catch their breath and they'll make a couple substitutions along with Franklin Pierce. 
Great job by Parafita seeing Sanchez crashing into the box. A low cross and a beautiful strike that was just off that right post. Parafita heads it up the field. Now post heading it back towards the center circle. Now to the game for the Eagles, number 33, Luca Dettori. Number 21, Manuel Rolova. As you just heard, Detola and Rivoli into the ball game. Excuse me, excuse me, Manuel Rivola into the game. Into the game. Franklin Pierce, number 10, Antonio Lampria Lima. And number 18, Tiago Baraguina. Lamprea Lima, the sophomore midfielder from Lisbon, Portugal, getting his first minutes. And like I said, Manuel Rolova in for post, along with Luca de Toli. As that shot hits the field goal post, so it's no good. We're keeping a little competition yesterday for the women's soccer game. They both tied in field goals made over the net. So right now still nothing nothing in that department. Ball into the middle, cleared high into the air. Another 50-50 ball won by the Ravens defensive back. And now we have a little heading party in the middle of the field. Ball finally coming down to the ground. Post will try and circle it back to their goalie. Salima keeps the ball in. Oh, now it's out. Almost an impressive effort there on the sideline on a beautiful ball from Jensen. Eleven and a half minutes left in this first half. Two top 25 teams duking it out in a big non-conference game. Franklin Pierce with the one nothing lead thus far. Lima turning it back to the right side of the field. Little one two. And the Ravens will have to bring it back to their defensive line. Really good defensive pressure by Post. The Eagles coming out with the 4-3-3 lineup today. Franklin Pierce, the 3-4-3, something different than they usually do. That pass in the middle, the header! It doesn't matter, there's an offside call. So another lucky break for the Eagles. The Ravens crashing the net in just a little offside. What a steal in the middle of the field. Now one on one with the goalie. Goal! Two to nothing, Franklin Pierce. A turnover in the backfield. And the Ravens make the Eagles pay. Valente with the goal, Limo with the assist. It's Valente's first goal of the season. 
Michael Pierce goal is scored by number 19, Gao Valenti, assisted by number 10, Antonio Lampria Lima. Valenti from Lima with 9.48 remaining in the first half. And there it is, the defensive pressure. The Eagles finally crack. And it results in another goal. Not much Jensen can do there in a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. The Ravens making another substitution. Gonzalez Suarez coming into the game in for Retuerto. And it's also Alvaro Ramira getting a rest too. So 2-0, Franklin Pierce on top. That goal came with nine minutes left here in this first half. I should say a little over nine and a half minutes left. Down to the game for Franklin Pierce, number 17, Paleo Gonzalez Suarez. And number 28. Now it's getting a little chippy, a little shoving after the play. We've seen a lot more extracurricular activity as the game has moved on. And a lot of that is due to the Eagles' frustration. They're playing really hard, and it's just unfortunate that those two goals have happened. But you got to wipe the slate clean and somehow find a way to come back in this game. On the volley, it's lofted over the net. An ambitious shot from Eunice Adarkanusi, yet somehow almost find a way to get it in the top part of the net. So the chip unsuccessful for Canusi. Post will try and work out of their box. So the official scoring is that came in the 35th minute of action, that second goal. The first goal came in three minutes into the ballgame. Header one by Post. Now they're pushing it up the field. Pablo Tenorio, a nice physical presence. And he draws a foul. So the Eagles will try and push the tempo to try and get on the scoreboard and cut the deficit in half. A little tiki taka right in front of me. Good job by Post for clearing it. And now they'll look to attack in the middle of the field. Good stop from behind. But a wild pass. Jen Salimi with the good tackle. Rolova now on the push. Gets it to Salimi. Tries to switch the field in a great job. Here's Luca Dettoli. Dishing it to the left wing. Trying to keep it in play. Nice step there from the Ravens and they clear it. Saku Kamara standing right in front of us, ready to check in. He's the sophomore forward from North Providence, Rhode Island. He'll likely come in for Eunice Adar Kanusi, who has played the entire game. Yeah, 
And now the switch will be made. And it is Canusi that will get a rest. Now to the game for the Ravens, number 15, Seiko Kamara. Long ball sent, header won by Parafita. Picture perfect day in Waterbury, Connecticut. It's a perfect day for a top 25 matchup. This game was supposed to be played yesterday afternoon, but because of the weather, they pushed it to a late morning, early afternoon contest. Both teams really wanting to get the game in. A big non-conference matchup between two top 25 dogs. So far, the Ravens up two to nothing on a goal from Ferrando Ferry three minutes into the ball game and then with 10 minutes left on a turnover from the Eagles defense Valente executes on a one-on-one -on -one matchup and so far Mother Nature has been kind to us we know whether the weather might change around 1 o'clock, and that's why this game started a little bit earlier. So far, so good, as the sun is slowly creeping away from the clouds. Post pushing the tempo. On the cross, it's blocked. Corner kick for the Eagles. Two and a half minutes remaining in the first half. First corner taken by number 10, Aritz Uriate. Yuri out with the corner. The cross is headed. Now Post pleading for a foul call. The refs say play on. Certainly a lot of contact. We don't know who initiated it. But another defensive stand for the Ravens. including this game they've outshot their opponents 40 to 9 in their first three contests that clearance does the job for the eagles and they're going to say it's eagles ball 71 seconds and counting Nice touch over there, and the ball is switched to the left side of the field. Excellent job by Uriot. Pass into no man's land, yet somehow the Ravens pounce on top of it. One minute remaining in the first They're on the push. Cut back. Working against the defender. And a nice defensive stop. It'll be a corner kick. 30 seconds left. Franklin Pierce with an already comfortable advantage trying to extend their lead. Franklin Pierce 
Tigers corner taken by number three, Rodrigo Parafita Bastiero. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Parafita, six, low cross. Five, Four, it's blocked. Three, Post will let two, it roll out of bounds. One. And that is your first half of action the of the from Lemoy Field. Play, it's Franklin Pierce University 2. The Franklin Pierce University Ravens Eagles, lead the Post University Eagles 2 to nothing. The Ravens have outshot their opponents 3 to 1. Two unlucky goals conceded by the Eagles. The first one off a penalty kick, a handball in the box. Ferrando Ferry rolled it into the net. And then after that, a defensive turnover in the box. It let Valente work one-on-one -on -one against Jensen, and he won that battle, pu pushing it past him into the right corner. So again, Franklin Pierce with a 2-0 lead. We have a 15-minute break. We'll stay tuned. I'm Robbie Johnson giving you the play-by-play -play commentary. We'll be back in just a moment. Again, Franklin Pierce 2, post nothing. Stay tuned for more updates.
champions know how to seize opportunities. When they see moments of greatness unfold right before their eyes, they push as hard as they possibly can. And then they push harder because the heart of a champion never settles, never quits, and never stops giving its all. We are champions. We are division two. We go big, we give it everything we've got, and we win on the field, on our campuses, in our communities, for our causes, in our careers. We rise to become champions in everything we do. We are Division II and there are no limits here. We make our time count. We set our own path. We become champions on our terms. It's time to up your game because we're here to play and learn. But most importantly, we're here to discover ourselves, our vision, our heart, our drive to achieve every goal we aim for because we want to be champions at the highest level, life. At Division II, the opportunities are here. Are you ready? In NCAA Division II, student athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. In a country where one in five people are affected by a mental health condition, it's time for all of us to step up and change the conversation. We all have stress in our lives and manage it in different ways. Grades. Finances. Practice. Family. Games. Finals. Homework. Playing time. Friends. Midterms. Treatment. Studying. Sleep. Time for me. We don't have to find the balance on our own. It's okay not to be okay. We're all in this together. People can and do get better. Caring about one another can be your competitive advantage. Communicate. Be aware. Show compassion. Be a champion for each other. Hope starts with you. Hope starts with me. Hope starts with us. We are CACC student athletes and we are breaking the stigma.
The NCAA has nearly half a million student athletes from more than 1,200 member schools and conferences. There are more than 19,000 teams competing for 90 championships in 24 sports across three divisions. Division II has more than 124,000 student athletes from over 302 colleges and universities. The division offers athletic scholarships while balancing a collegiate athletic environment that encourages student athletes to discover and pursue what they love. The annual NCAA convention is where Division II members implement new rules. Delegates from every school and conference gather to discuss and vote on each proposal. Each eligible school, conference office, and the Student Athlete Advisory Committee hold one vote. New rules in Division II can originate in one of two ways. A majority of proposals start in Division II committees. Those groups comprised of representatives from member schools or conferences debate concepts and forward recommendations to the Division's Management Council and President's Council. The Division II Management Council reviews each proposal from the committees, makes recommendations, and forwards them to the President's Council. The President's Council, composed of college presidents and chancellors, is the top leadership group in Division II. Its primary function is to establish and direct general policy and strategic direction for the division. It is the only group within the governance structure that can sponsor legislation for a vote at convention on its own. New rules can also be proposed directly from Division II members. If 15 active Division II schools or two conferences sign on as sponsors, the proposal will be voted on by the entire Division II membership no matter what position the division's committees and councils take. Through the legislative process, the Division II membership and its representatives enact change across the division. Welcome back to Lemoy Field. Two to nothing, Franklin Pierce. 45 minutes left of action. The Ravens struck first on a goal three minutes into action from Ferrando Ferry. It was off a penalty kick. And then with 10 minutes left in the first half, another goal from Valente. It was off a defensive turnover from Post. Valente one-on-one -on -one with the goalie, pushed it past him to the right corner of the net. And let's go by the numbers in the first half. Nine total shots for Franklin Pierce to post two shots. Three shots on target for the Ravens, one for the Eagles. And Soren Jensen has two saves to Diego Montoya. Casillas is one. And the Ravens have four corner kicks. And Post had one corner kick towards the end of the first half. Both teams with only one offside so far. And the possession has been dominated by Franklin Pierce, 65 to 35. 
We're underway here in the second half. The Eagles looking to push the tempo early. A little one-two touch into the corner. Relova will let that go out of bounds. Into the middle with Uriot. Now the ball is crossed and it's blocked by the defender. Uriot cuts to the right, back to the left. Tries to shoot as he's, as he's falling down. The ball hops up in the air and it's caught by Casillas. So the Eagles with the exact energy you want coming out of the half. You love to see them buzzing all over the field, so definitely a good sign. Only a minute in, though. Let's see if they can keep this up. Dangerous pass back to Jensen. Kamara with the pressure. Jensen clears it to the side. Wild touch from Florindo. So it rolls out of bounds. It'll go to the Ravens. Physical tackle there from Uriot. So the Ravens turn it over. It's back with the Eagles. They'll play it in the back. The lone assist of the day coming from Lima on the second goal. Again, the first goal was a penalty kick from a handball in the box. Post pushing it up the right sideline. It rolls out of bounds. And that'll be the second corner kick today. No, they're going to call it a throw-in. It was really close to that corner flag, but they said throw-in. Lots of space for the Ravens. Beautiful ball to the left sideline. Aaron Sanchez works it back. Now he's in the middle of the field dribbling to his right. The through ball. Now the cross into the middle. Swing and a miss, and the shot is blocked. Sanchez trying to roll it into the right corner of the net, but a nice defensive play from the Eagles. Deflecting it just away from the goal. And now there's a penalty, or excuse me, a foul on the Ravens. Booming ball up the field. Nice through ball to the left side. The cross from Milova. Shot is off target. Right idea, low cross to the feet of Uriot, but just couldn't get it on frame. The Eagles starting out the first half with the same lineup, same thing for the Ravens. And if you're a Franklin Pierce fan, if it ain't broke, don't fix it right now. Certainly having their way with the possession and the chances on goal. Let's go, 
Nice ball movement here from the Ravens. Constantly switching the field with limited touches. Through ball to the left side. A little too much mustard on that pass. It's a goal kick for Jensen and company. Jensen just taps it to one of his defenders. A long ball up the field. The header won by the Eagles, and they're looking to push in the middle of the field. Beautiful ball to the right wing. Pass towards the sideline, and there's the flag. Salimi falling to the ground. It's a foul right outside the 18-yard box. The Eagles have a free kick and a chance to cut the deficit in half. The clock has stopped. 38 minutes and 30 seconds left in the second half. Post with a lot of work to do. They faced this deficit before, earlier in the week against Southern New Hampshire. The number 14 team in the country, they were down 2 to nothing going into the break, yet found a way to draw with two goals in the second half. Like we've said, the Eagles are no strangers to deficits and coming back from them They've done it all season long, and this will be their biggest test thus far. The free kick is blocked by the wall. Now dumped to the far post. Post trying to keep it in. It rolls out of play. Whose ball is it? It's a goal kick. Excellent job by Felipe Garcia winning those headers. Now that ball is dumped into the box. Yuriat trying to fight for position. He's unsuccessful, and Casillas clears it near the bleachers. And a Raven is on the ground. Rodrigo Parafita, a little banged up, but he appears to be okay, so we'll keep going. Throwing back towards the middle of the field, dangerous play, but the Eagles seeming to get away with it for now. Felipe Garcia checked into the game just recently. Lofts a ball down the left sideline. It's blocked by the Ravens. Now they're on the counterattack. Beautiful ball to the left wing. And a nice defensive step. Salimi on the move. In the middle to Berti. Now to Rolova. But he's pickpocketed from behind. Good job by the Ravens not giving up. The linesman throws the flag up. The play was out of bounds. Post with the throw in. The Eagles still keep throwing it into the middle of the field. It's only a matter of time before they don't get away with that. Always dangerous. You want to go up the sideline with that. 
25 Bertie. He's got a little room. Crosses it to the far post, but it's headed out of the box. Botange dishes it back. They switch fields. Florindo driving. The cross a little over Salimi's head. Out of play. Another good chance for the Eagles. Just a little high on the cross from Ferlindo. Corner flag knocked down by Sanchez on the pass. Post now has it off the turnover. Salimi trying to dribble through the whole Ravens squad. Post still has it. But a nice step over there from the Ravens. Saku Kamara colliding with the defender. Good job by Anako Stiatis. Steps in and has a nice tackle. Give and go attempt on the sideline. Kamara trying to keep it in. Almost does so successfully. That was pretty impressive. Just over 10 minutes into the second half. Franklin Pierce 2, post nil. Bertie. What a ball. Uriot. The shot. No, he's offsides. What a ball from Bertie, but the referee says offsides already the second time in the second half. The Eagles cannot catch a break. Uriot had daylight. He was one on one with the goalie, but the ref says, nah, nah, we're taking this one back. Great recovery from Botange. Relova trying to switch the field. The ball is high up in the air. He heads it towards the sideline. Nice save from Florindo, but it's right to a Raven. Franklin Pierce on the move, but a Stonewall Jackson there and Felipe Garcia. Ref says play on. And there's the foul called on Detoli. Stick in his cleat out. Parafita to the left wing. The cross into the box. Kamara can't get ahead on it. And he is charged with the foul. Going airborne, he definitely has the height. But pushed the defender from behind, so Jensen will take the free kick. The Ravens looking to make some substitutions in a moment. Garcia to Bertie, a beautiful touch, and a nice pass up to Yuriat. Surveying the options, he'll go to his right. Salimi on the move. Ball between his feet, and he stumbles over it. Post still with it. Anagostiitis will work it back to Garcia. Dribbling to his left. He finds Yuriat, a nice move. Past him, tries to dish it forward, but he's kicked in the cleat. No call. Now Kamara on the run. Working one-on-one, -on -one, now takes it back to Sanchez. Sanchez back to Kamara on the right wing. The cross into the middle. 
headed away by Post. Kamara lets it roll out of play. And that was a smart thing to do. Yuriat trying to walk it off. The trainer will come out and try to assist him. Yuriat is going to get a rest. He's been working really hard. Been a tenacious defender and causing havoc on the offensive end. Hopefully... He gets rested and feels a little better in a few minutes. But for now, Pablo Tenorio will come back in for him. Franklin Pierce making their substitutions. Martin Carpena coming in for Javier Torres Sanchez. And then Paleo Gonzalez Suarez coming in for Ator Le Ator Retuerto. Try and say that 10 times fast. Down to the game for Post University, number 14, Pablo Tenorio. I know with these names, it was inevitable that I was going to mess it up at least one time. But we're having fun with it. I like rolling my R's, like I said earlier. It's a good challenge. Now into the game for Franklin Pierce, number 16, Martin Carpena. Number 17, Paleo Gonzalez Suarez. And number nine, pass into the middle right to the Eagles defender. And even the PA guy's having a little difficulty, so I don't feel too bad. Geronimo Ferrando Ferry. And he nailed that one. That one was fun to do, especially earlier in the game with the goal. Too bad the audio wasn't working then, but we're cooking now. Shot on goal, a little wide. Yunus Adar Kanusi had two goals in his last game. He has four goals so far on the year. Always a threat in the middle of the field. If he winds up, he's like Messi or Ronaldo. It's almost automatic that it goes in. Push from behind, the Eagles will have it. What a behind-the-heel pass there from Jenton Salimi. Now Nassin's on the move. Gets cut off by the defender, and the ball is cleared out of play. Good recovery defense from the Ravens. But what an exquisite pass over there from Jenton Salimi. Just touching it backwards. That could have been an amazing counterattack if it wasn't for the great defensive play at the end on Nassin. The cross is low and headed out. So the Ravens clear it out of harm's way once again. And they'll try and make post work backwards on their passes. Garcia up the field to Bertie. Touch pass. Good idea, but Rolova falls down. A little bit more of a tiki-taka display from the Ravens. Getting it to the sideline. Alvaro Ramira into the middle. Headed high into the air. Still in the 18-yard box. And now Gostiad is fighting for position. He wins it. And Detoli clears it. One touch from Bertie. But Rolova, or excuse me, Rolova touches it out of play. Caleb Williams checking back into the game. 
He's coming in for Antonio Lamprea, Lamprea Lima. And the refs didn't see that too. There was just an illegal substitution on the Ravens side. Aaron Sanchez coming out of the game while play was going on. Still seems to be 11 on 11, so no advantage. Cross to the middle. The header is over the net. Might have been a field goal. I don't know if I had the right angle there. If it was, it's one nothing Ravens on the field goals. Now into the game for Franklin Pierce, Alvaro Ramira. And into the game for Post University, number 16, Francisco Souza. As you just heard, Sousa checking back in. Looking to energize this offense for the Eagles. Just about 20 minutes into the second half, I'm Robbie Johnson giving you the play-by-play -play commentary for this top 25 non-conference matchup. Post trailing two to nothing against the Ravens. Good idea down the left sideline, but just a little too strong on the pass. Errant pass from Garcia. The Ravens on the counterattack. Cross to the middle is blocked. Touch pass. The shot is on goal. A little wide. A really good chance off the volley. But struck a little to the right of the net. So Post getting away with that one. Already conceding a goal off a turnover in the first half. The Ravens with the relentless pressure in the midfield. And they know if they can control possession, it's going to be really hard to beat them. Might have something to do with why they've won 51 of their last 54 games. Defending national champions. But they're playing a team in the Eagles that have won five straight CACC titles. So the university, post-university Eagles are no joke. And down the sideline is for Lorindo. He's got some room. The cross, way off target. His teammates not getting up the field quick enough on the cross. One of the goal scorers in today's action, ready to check in. Ferrando Ferry is going to come in for Tiago Berenguina. There we go. I nailed that one. Turned out to be a picture perfect day here at Lemoy Field. A few dark ominous clouds over us, but it looks like we're going to get the rest of this game in. 
If you were tuning in yesterday to the women's soccer matchup, that game had two different lightning delays, and it was pouring for most of the contest. But Post still got the win, beating DeUville 3-1. to It was their first win of the year, and they scored their first three goals of the season, so congrats to the Eagles. And because of those delays, that's why they pushed this game back to 11 a.m. Eastern time. This game was supposed to be yesterday at 2.30. But again, both teams really wanting to get this non-conference matchup in. It's a good litmus test to see where they are in the season. And you saw Post, they already played the number 14 team in the country and earned a 2-2 tie with them. So they're hoping to set off some late fireworks and possibly tie this game or win it. Off the turnover, Franklin Pierce on the counterattack. Mira racing down the sideline. That shot is in! Alvaro Ray Mira, his first goal of the year, three to nothing, Franklin Pierce. And again, I sound like a broken record, but the defensive pressure in the middle of the field once again gets to post. And Mira showing off the speed. A really tough angle on that shot, yet somehow slots it in the low part of that right corner. So with just under 22 minutes left, the Franklin Pierce Ravens are on cruise control. They'll make some substitutions. His first goal of the year. And now the Eagles are in a do or die situation. Franklin Pierce goal, scored by number 11, Alvaro Ramira. Assisted by number 20, Caleb Williams. Williams from Ramira. With about 22 minutes remaining in the second half. And with that assist, Caleb Williams now has a point in each of his first three games. It's the first time he's done that in his collegiate career. An assist in game one, two goals in game two. And a nice pass in game three to Mira, who coasted down the sideline and had a nice shot in the right corner of the net. Valente on the move. He's already got a goal. Trying to cross it in. He works his way past two different Eagles defenders. But the call will be a, a goal kick. That was awfully close. I thought it deflected off an Eagles defender. Ramira in the middle. Detoli with the physical tackle and the clearance from his teammate. Botange trying to switch fields, but who else but Mira right there to pounce on it? Caleb Williams dribbling through everybody. Wants a foul. He was certainly tugged, but the ref says play on. Excellent through ball down the sideline. Salimi on the move, trying to cut back to his left. Salimi, physicalness, and he loses it. The physicality got the best of him. Great defensive play by the Ravens.
Errant pass to Detoli. Lays it off. A little give and go. Detoli back towards the sideline. Tenorio, his pass blocked. And the Ravens clear it. After a little stoppage time, we're back in action. Throw in for the Ravens. Hops over everybody. And there is Canusi on the push. Can't dribble past. And now goes Theodis. Another turnover in the middle of the field. The Ravens on the pursuit. Down the left sideline. Little push pass past the defender doesn't work. It'll be a corner kick for the Ravens. into the middle of the field. The cross is headed out of play. Good job by Tenorio. Tenorio headed out of harm's way and there's a foul in the middle of the field on the Ravens. Dangerous pass to the middle of the field. Squeaks by Canusi. Sprinting around the field causing pressure. And that was all him on that turnover. Great job by Canusi. Ferrando Ferry just messing around with the Eagles defense right now. This has turned into a possession game. It was already 65-35 to 35 heading into the half in favor of the Ravens. And that ball sails way out of play. And the most recent goal scorer will check out of the game. He along with Martin Carpena will likely be done for the rest of this match. And there is Thomas Esperio walking off the pitch for the last time. Long touch. But right there is Simon Hemmler. He still gets it taken away from him. It's a throw in for post. Tenorio switches the field. Now to the game for post number 18, Simon Hemmler, and number 28, Paul Ludwig. Somehow slipping past the defender, but he catches more turf than ball on that shot as it rolls to a Pierce, Franklin Pierce defender, now and they the clear it easily. For Franklin Pierce, number 28, DJ Tucker, number 22, Lucio Yahia, and number four, Roberto Jose Dubon. 
Paul Ludwig checking in for the Eagles. The junior defender from Germany. He went to Monroe College before transferring to Post University. Long ball down the field. Header won by Garcia. Beautiful heading pass from Williams. The Ravens have a little room on that left sideline. They'll decide to dish it back. Nice cutback move. Now dishing it to the wing. DJ Tucker, a wild pass. Oh, what a move by Tucker. A little dipsy do past the defender. Williams, nice pursuit, and he dishes it to the wing. Williams back with it. Lays it off. Ferry, cross to the far post. Touched over there by Tucker. Dishes it back. Into the middle. And now they're bringing it back again. Ferry with it in the middle. Pass to the left side. A give and go attempt not successful. Ferry chips it to the far post. And they're offside. Canusi waiting for it. But again, glorious ball movement. We've seen that all day long. Long boot from Jensen. We haven't seen him really try and kick it down the field like that he's usually just tapped it to a defender trying to make the simple passes and work it from the back the linesman wanting a foul call but the head referee didn't see it so there's play on uh. Of course, as I'm talking too, I just lost my piece of paper. Thank you. I'll just say the wind carried that one. At least it didn't just get totally drenched like yesterday. But that was partially my fault. Yesterday, I left it on the side of the table that had the table part where it was raining. And it was just falling down on it. And at that point when I was just using it, there was no point. Completely drenched. Tore it apart, but it is what it is. Souza trying to switch the field. It'll still be a throw in near the halfway circle. But right before that throw in, both teams will make some more substitutions. Canusi checks out of the game along with Rodrigo Parafita. Parafita getting a captain's applause from his bench. And then Paleo Gonzalez Suarez coming out for one final time. Into the game for Franklin Pierce, number six, Colton Madeira. Number 15, Seco Camara. Number 38, Gamer. Nice interception. Jose Dubon trying to chip it over the goalkeeper. A little offline. Good idea, though. Jensen was really far out. Definitely probably 20 to 25 yards out of the box. Relax, 
Down the sideline, cutting through three defenders, Post swallows him up, and the foul is finally called. Eight and a half minutes left. Franklin Pierce on cruise control, three to nothing. One second half goal from Alvaro Ramira. Souza trying to go up the sideline. Some contact, no call though. He was scrummaging with Roberto Jose Dubon. Castillo gobbles it up. Has really not gotten a whole lot of action here in the second half. And this is a great opportunity for both squads to get players in, get some experience against two really good teams, and then you get to evaluate further whether you want these pieces in the game as the season progresses. And Post will make another substitution. It'll be Christopher Arnett coming in. Arnett, the freshman forward from Norway. Down to the game for Post University, number 15, Christopher Arnett. And Arnett, before coming to Post, was a very good player in his high school. Was part of the KFUM Football B club and was very close to setting a scoring record. He had the most points by any player of that football club. So definitely a bright future for him and a great opportunity to get some action against the number one team in the country. Down to the game for Post University, number 34, Fred Longo. Can we get to five minutes? That's when I, I stop. Um, only if Franklin Pierce subs. So the winning team will get. If we sub, keeps going. That's so weird. Nice save from Tucker on the sideline, but a foul on him. Oh no, they're saying it's a throw in. So they'll dish it back to Garcia. Nice fake in the pass to the midfielder up the field. Good pass to Souza, and now they'll switch the field. And that ball might be history. And that's the first clearance I've seen here where it goes into those bushes. I don't know if it happens a lot, but I don't imagine them finding finding many balls in there, especially if it goes over those high bushes. Another goal scorer out of the game for the Ravens, Jao Valente, is done. Lamprea Lima is coming in for him, and Post wanted a foul. Antonio Lamprea Lima. Looking ahead for Post's schedule, they have another home game coming up on September 16th. They'll play against Wilmington University. Then on the 23rd, they're at Jefferson University. That's a 2.30 kickoff start. And then on Tuesday, September 26th, 
They'll have another CACC matchup at the University of Bridgeport, that game at 6 p.m. Eastern time. If the result holds, it'll be the Eagles' first loss of the year. They'll fall to 1-1-2, one, one, and, and Franklin Pierce will improve to 3-0, their winning streak at 19 games. And they'll be 52-1-2 in their last 55 games, dating back to the beginning of 2020. The last loss for the Ravens was September 24th, 2022. Kamara working hard on the sideline. But Post wins it, and they pass it back to Garcia. Hemmler on the sideline. Little one-touch soccer, and it ends with Garcia controlling it at his feet. On the run, but Casillas heads it out of harm's way. Up the sideline, nice ball by Tucker. Soren Jensen crashing. He lets it roll out of play. It's a goal kick. Good run from Lima, but just couldn't get there in time. Under three minutes remaining. Franklin Pierce three, post nil in this top 25 non-conference matchup. And this has been a really good showcase of just disciplined soccer for the Ravens on both sides of the ball, pressuring the Eagles, forcing them to make difficult passes in their own third, and then converting on those mistakes. Especially with that first unlucky penalty, it was the handball in the box that Ferrando Ferry scored on, and then of course, with the defensive turnover near the box. And Jao Valente made the Eagles pay with that goal. And then Caleb Williams notching another point this season. He's got five on the year. He's second on the team in total points, right behind Adar Caduce, who has four goals already. And just trying to hone him, or hone on him defensively, he freed up a lot of options for, I guess, Post to deal with her. In that situation, Caduce, they were targeting him so much to the point where the Ravens had a lot of other options open. And that's why Jao Valente was able to get a goal. You saw Ferrando Ferry, he was dominant in this game. And of course, a beautiful pass to Mira up the field. And that was the third goal of the game off the Caleb Williams assist. The third corner of the day for Post with 74 seconds left in the game. One minute remaining in the second half. One minute remaining in the second half. A little extracurricular activity in the box. But it'll be a goal kick for the Ravens. And that's what's amazing about this Ravens squad. They're up 3-0, 30 seconds left, but they're continuing to execute. They preach doing the little things perfectly. They're going to continue to pressure you until that final whistle blows. 
and they're going to try and get as nine, many goals as possible. Eight, seven, it's very rare that six, you have a good team like five, this four, not be three, this complacent. Two, one. And after the countdown, Final this score, game is over. Game, three, a dominating University performance from zero. Franklin Pierce Franklin winning Franklin this one by a final two, score of three to nothing. Game. We hope to see you back here this weekend. As their Eagles will take With on the win, University on Saturday the Franklin Pierce Ravens the improved to three and zero on the season. We thank you for coming out. They've outscored their opponents so twelve to one, soon. and they've outshot their opponents forty-one to eight. And for Post University, it's the first time they weren't able to come back after falling behind early. They fall to one one and two on the season. But a lot of football left to be played for both squads. And this could very well be an NCAA Super Regional matchup. So it could be exciting to see how both teams improve as the season progresses. And moving forward, the Ravens don't have the easiest schedule as well. This was by far their biggest test thus far. They're going to play Bentley on the 16th. That'll be at 4 p.m. Eastern time on their home field. Then they're at St. Michael's on September 20th. Kickoff at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And then, of course, they're going to be at St. Rose on the 23rd. That game at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time. All those games can be seen on the CACC Network. So, again, your final score, Franklin Pierce 3, post nothing. On an unrelated note, I'd like it to take a moment to pray for any families that have victims of the 9-11 tragic incident just praying for you and your families I hope that you can find peace and keep your faith strong on this difficult day and I hope everybody around the country can unite and rally together to push through this difficult time so again all my prayers go to those families today and that is something that no matter what happens on the field we are all here as a strong country together looking to make this place a little bit more positive each day. But again, your final score, Franklin Pierce 3, post nothing when we come back. We will give you all the updates and highlights on our league website. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Robbie Johnson signing out from Lemoy Field in Waterbury, Connecticut.